My name is Brad Stevens. I do tattoos in Brooklyn, New York. Like I said, I like to be able to tattoo everybody, like every kind of person. Um, so I try to be reasonable and, and attainable. Um, I do think there's a, it's, it's such a, a, a niche thing that I do that if someone finds me, you know, I'm, I'm kinda, I'm not on the grid necessarily. I mean, I'm, I'm on Instagram, but I don't, I don't have a website. I'm not at a tattoo shop. So if someone, you know, digs deep, finds my work, you know, wants to get tattooed by me, they want, you know, the kind of tattoo I do, like that's, you know, you're kind of already my kind of person, you know? So that's what's cool about having the private studio is you're just sitting there with people that want your thing and they're, they're already into being there. And uh, I think a lot of tattooers can have like an us versus them mentality. And I think that happens a lot at walk-in shops where you're doing like sometimes little tattoos and it's, it's a common thing for people to be like, oh, how small can I get it? So with me, for people that seek me out, like I, I, don't, I don't have that anymore and it's, and it's beautiful. Um, I don't have people being like, how small can it be? Because most of my people are, they know me, they know my work and that's what they want. So, but I see these tattooers feuding with their customers. You know, there's all these like weird, like now there's a call out Instagram. That's like how not to get tattooed. And sometimes it, it's funny, but sometimes it looks really petty. Like sometimes tattooers expect to be like, oh, you just came in here for a little walk-in tattoo, but you don't know who the fuck I am. I'm this sick dude. But in the grand scheme of things, like who the fuck are you? Who the, who the fuck am I? You know? So I'm just happy that people come to get tattooed. Um, I mean, I love the tattoo culture aspect of things. So it's not like I'm not siding with the tattooers, but man, my customers have been great. And, and if, you know, like I said, if you seek me out and I'm your guy, then you're my guy or whatever person. I'm going to start from the beginning. Um, so I'm from central New York and I, Kind of developed a taste for tattooing up there uh, there was a lot of cool stuff going on up there so i was drawing a lot of tattoos at the time it was just tattoo magazines you'd look at and uh, well, i was drawing tattoo artwork i wasn't drawing tattoos for anyone or anything like that um, i knew you know at the time there wasn't a lot of information around this is before social media this is before the internet was pretty useful so i'm uh in upstate New York, I'm in like high school, I'm just drawing in my notebook, but it's like traditional roses, stuff like that, and stuff I'd seen in tattoo magazines. There's one tattoo magazine called Hardcore Ink, which uh, it was a bunch of like hardcore guys, uh, tattoos and, and stuff like that. So it was kind of like from the scene I was interested in, and it ended up being a lot of traditional stuff. So that's kind of what I, uh, I, I use as my early reference. It was like Brady Duncan, he's a Baltimore guy, uh, I believe he's a Baltimore guy or somewhere in, in the South. You guys might know about that guy, but Matt Rinks. And it was an issue on one like upstate New York tattoo shops, but it ended up um, including a lot of those guys. But anyways, yeah, I'm looking at this kind of stuff and I'm just drawing in high school and I went off to college for a couple of years down here and I always wanted a tattoo. So that kind of got put on the back burner while I was in college, but I'm still like drawing and painting and I'm kind of, I'm kind of turning it up because I know I'm just going to get my associate's degree appease my parents that I went to college and, uh, you know, try to learn how to tattoo. I got this job from some guy I'd heard of in, in the tattoo world, which I thought was totally insane. So I ended up working in Boston. I worked at a couple shops in Boston after a falling out with that guy. Uh, and then I always kind of wanted to come back to New York where I'd gone to college. And I, I mean, New York is just a city, you know, it's, it's like sometimes you're in Boston or you're in one of these smaller cities and you don't feel like you're in a city, you feel like you're in a big town. But I, I ended up moving to New York and it's been really energizing because it's, it's really competitive here. It's, uh, everyone comes here to be the best at what they do. So um, being thrown into that environment where some of the best tattooers in the world might be tattooing a few blocks away from you, it really kind of lights a fire under you. So I was working at Daredevil in New York uh, as soon as I got here and, and they were coned with Fun City, so I worked over there too. After a few years of that, I moved to Adorned, which was huge to get a job at Adorned. I always wanted to work there. Um, after about six years at Adorned, I just started feeling like I needed to branch out and do my own thing. Uh, there were really no tattoo shops in New York that, that I totally wanted to work at. I wasn't in love with, with any of them, so I figured if I could just build my own thing without starting my own shop and my customers can have privacy. Uh, I'm starting to work on bigger pieces at this time. Then I figured that was the way to go. And that's how I ended up at this studio here. 
the first tattoo I ever got was um, there was a band called The Promise. You guys know that band? Hardcore band, straight edge band um, in upstate New York. And you know, when you're, I was 18, 19, and to, to, in, at that time, that little world is your world, you know, like that little like hardcore scene or whatever. So the first tattoo I ever got was uh, the album Believer. Like the, uh, like that's what it's from. So it's just this heart with the rose and the banner. It says Believer in it. I could tell people, a lot of people afterwards, I didn't even think about this. A lot of people were like, oh, are you Christian? And I'm not. And that, I didn't realize that was like a Christian thing, you know? But um, yeah, it was for this hardcore band I liked when I was 18 or 19, you know? And I still listen to it every once in a while and it still gives me those feelings of back then. But uh, if I could do it over, maybe I wouldn't get like such a super local, <laughs> you know, thing tattooed on me, but it's, it's cool. You know, I, I would never, I'm not the kind of guy that gets cover ups or anything like that. So I just like my tattoos to be my memories, even if I don't love them anymore, you know? I tattooed myself once during my apprenticeship. Uh, I didn't plan on it, I didn't want to, but uh, the guy, TJ, that taught me how to tattoo one day, he was like, you're not gonna be serious about tattooing unless you can sacrifice some of your own skin. Um, Cause I, I, at this point, like Grez, who I got my first tattooer from, he's like a big name. Like he's, it's, I was only getting like designer tats, you know, like high end shit. And to me, like even like a little spot on my body, like taken up with like a tattoo that I knew was gonna be shitty, was like, I couldn't even fathom it at that time. And since then I've chilled and gotten bad tattoos on purpose. But um, yeah, at the time I was, it, was, it was heavy, so, but I really wanted to learn how to tattoo. I would have done anything for it. So I, uh, I did a Sailor Jerry butterfly. Want me to show you? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I did a Sailor Jerry like skull with a butterfly on the inside of my leg. And it's hard to do because you gotta be standing like, like not standing, but sitting like that and you're inflicting the pain. You can't move around it to like pull lines in different directions. This is my first tattoo I ever did on myself. Um, I did tattoos before then, and this is totally shitty. But um, yeah, I had to tattoo myself and I chose that spot and I chose like a classic design, the Sailor Jerry like skull with the butterfly. And uh, I'm glad I have it. Would never get it covered or anything. The thing about tattooing is it's such a heavy responsibility and so much of my personal time is taken up by it. And I think the reason that I can do well in it is it's my job and it's my hobby. So a lot of my personal time is spent drawing. A lot of my personal time is spent sketching because when you're sketching, you're doing exercise. You're, um, it's, it's like if you wanna be good at a sport, you know, the more you do it, the, the better you're gonna be. So when I sketch, it's like working out for my brain, for my hands, you know, uh, then when, I, when it is game time and I have to draw the tattoo, it comes a little bit more naturally and the drawing comes together a little bit better. So because tattooing is my job and it's my hobby, um, that's mostly what I do. I mean, if I think about what I do in my free time, it's, it's sketching, you know? I mean, there is some hanging out with my wife and stuff like that, like normal people shit. But I mean, I'm obsessed with my job and that's, I, guess, I guess that's a good thing. Um, I, I don't want your tattoo to ever go out of style. So I, I try to keep it classic. I try, to, I try to create a feeling with the tattoo. I try to, because I, I don't know if, if you guys have experienced this, but the first time I ever saw a tattoo, you think, wow, this is from a different world that I don't even know about. And, and I think there's still some mystery in life a little bit. And I think we can hone in on that with the kind of images that we choose. And we can give someone that feeling when they, when they look at your tattoos, you know, and, and that's, that's the whole thing. That's what art's about is a feeling, you know, you listen to a song and you don't think about, for me as a non-musician, I don't think about, oh, they did these kind of chords and I don't think about technically, I think about the feeling that I get from that song. And I want someone to look at my work and just have a feeling from it. They want to, even if it's, even if it's a feeling of insecurity, if it's a feeling of fear, you know, I want, I, I, I really just want someone to, to like it if it's a feeling of mystery you know, um, and I think music can give you the same thing, art can give you the same thing, and a good tattoo certainly should, you know, there's, it's such a subculture, and the kind of people that seek me out, like, I've been lucky enough to have people that are fearless, you know, there's a lot of fear of, you know, being, um, 
I think there's a lot of fear of being perceived in the wrong way, especially to New Yorkers. They're very particular about what they get tattooed on them. Um, but the people who sought me out have been pretty fearless. They get big work and there's, you know, there's something about those kind of people where I just want to hang out. I just want to be around those kind of people, you know, this kind of, they don't care about everyone else. They just love tattoos. And that's, that's my world too. The owner knew I wanted a tattoo. He's like, Hey, if you strap a, <laughs> he's like, if you strap some chicken in your balls and let this, <laughs> let this fish eat it off, I'll give you, I'll, I'll teach you how to tattoo. And the, so the next day, and I'm vegan, I'm, I'm even vegan back then, and I, I must have taken some chicken out of my parents' freezer or something, and I came in with it the next day, and I'm like, I'm ready to do this. And the guy's like, I was just kidding, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that.